In this episode of Burning Shiva, we will be looking at the worship of the ancient Persian god Mithra, who became hugely popular in Rome of the first few centuries AD. Like a lot of cannabis history, this is not information you will find touched on in the many books of the cult of Mithra, and academic prejudice, as well as a lack of knowledge, seem to have both contributed to that fact. Recreational drugs and marijuana have had a profound impact on Western civilization but they are not studied in the modern university because the topic is taboo. Cannabis was probably always an ingredient in the incenses that fumigated sacred space in classical Roman sanctuaries. It was also commonly available as an, as an additive to wine. The cult of Mithra was so popular that the West could have ended up as a Mithraic culture instead of a Christian one if it were not for the conversion of certain emperors to the new religion of Christianity. The worship of this Persian god and its seven-stage system of initiation became so popular in the ancient world that up until the fourth century, it rivaled Christianity for the attention of the masses. The Mithraism was the form of the Halma cult, um, or the Zoroastrian religion as it passed into Europe, and it was a great religion, one of the three great religions of uh, the Roman Empire, finally supplanted by Christianity. They had a, a sevenfold uh, sequence of initiations in which a variety of different sacred drugs would have been employed, but they gathered in a small, confined underground space, and the space was always fumigated. So entering the sacred space would put you in a sense of holiness, and no doubt cannabis was one of the ingredients in the incense. There's lots of good evidence for the use of cannabis in the worship of Mithras. This is a very widespread cult in the ancient world. So I would have to say that yes, cannabis was very widespread within the celebration of the cult of Mithras by the aristocracy in Rome, as well as the soldiery. Mithra's cult is said to have been spread throughout the ancient world and particularly to Rome by a group of Cilician pirates who adopted the god and extended his worship to the west. Although introduced to the Roman military much earlier, the emperor Commodus, who ruled from 180 to 192 AD, was initiated into the Mithraic mysteries. And from that period forward, the imperial house favored the cult. Mithraism had many converts, however it was solely a male cult and his worship was principally in the army, for his religion was that of a soldier. Mithras, as worshipped in Rome, differed from the Persian Mithra of the Zendavesta in a variety of ways, and it has been suggested that he represents a sort of Persian paganism condemned by the more monotheistic Zoroastrians of ancient Iran. In his journey from Persia to Rome, Mithra accumulated a variety of magical beliefs, such as astrology from the Chaldean Magi, and via Greek philosophy, a whole theology was created to combine these different aspects. Mithra was a protector and supporter of man in this life. He washed over his soul in the next, defending it against the impure spirits and transferring it into the realm of eternal bliss. He was represented as all-seeing and all-hearing. He was represented as born on the 25th of December, on which an annual festival was held on his behalf. His worship extended into all the countries colonized by the Aryans, of which became subject to Persian power. It found its way to Rome at an early period, and the mysteries of Mithra, which fell on the vernal equinox, was the most famous of the Roman festivals. Baptism and the partaking of a mystical liquid to be drank with utterances of a sacred formula were among the inaugurate acts. From Persia, the worship of Mithra and the mysteries were called into Syria, Lydia, Judea, Egypt, Greece, northern, central, and western Europe. His devotees were not suppressed in Rome until virtually superseded by the teachings of Jesus, really Mithras, under a different name, in A.D. 378. Brown makes an interesting comment there, and it is important to note that Mithras shared a variety of mythological motifs with the Christian god Jesus. The similarities between Mithras and Jesus were so profound that when the Roman Empire chose Christianity as the state religion outlawing all other cults, 
the newly formed Roman Catholic Church Fathers tried to deny claims they had borrowed elements of the Mithraic mythology, which long predated their own, and attributed them to their own God by claiming that the devil, with evil foresight, had seen the coming of Christ and decided to preempt the arrival of the Holy Child and placed his motifs on the pagan God before his arrival. These adoptions included Christmas and most notably the Eucharistic ceremony, which more than a few researchers have suggested was itself based on the ancient Hamler ritual. Mithra has been connected with the sacred agent Soma and Hilma cults, a sacred beverage that, as I show in my book Cannabis and the Soma Solution, likely originated from a cannabis beverage, as shown by recent archaeological excavations. A uh, Russian archaeologist named Victor Saryanidi the author of Margiana and Proto-Zoroastrianism, did some very interesting archaeological work in Turkmenistan. Uh, he discovered uh, several different fortified walled temples um, in Margiana and Bactria. That there were several rooms in these temple complexes which were set apart from the main worshipping areas. Um, and these were apparently manufacturing areas where the uh, drugs that they were taking were manufactured. The drug was called Soma or Haoma in Iran. He uh, dug into these uh, archaeological temples and he discovered that several of the rooms contained huge vats and he was able to uh, get scraped samples off the bottom of these urns um, and submit them for analysis and they discovered that the pollen grains which had been preserved uh, consisted of ephedra and cannabis. Deep in the Karakum Desert in Central Asia, a previously unknown Bronze Age civilization has been discovered. It was believed that there had never been human occupation in this desert until the archaeologist Victor Sarianidis started working here in Turkmenistan 40 years ago. Here in Gunur Tepe, ancient ritual practices have been identified such as preparation of hallucinogenic ritual drinks. Rather than being a diabolical preimitation of the Christian sacraments, as Justin Martyr and other church fathers tried to suggest, the Maithraic sacraments were a remnant of the even earlier Persian Haoma ceremony, an ancient rite tied with the Vedic Soma of the Indian religion and Haoma of the Avestan religion. Mithraism was the way that the Zoroastrian Hauma Soma cult was assimilated in the civilizing traditions of Europe. Mithra is presented in the Zoroastrian system as an intermediary between Orahara Mazda, God, and Ehrman, the devil, and was known as a mediator. He taught mankind to make vows and offerings. It was he who introduced Hauma worship. This was an intoxicating beverage prepared from the green stalks of the moon plant otherwise cannabis indica or Indian hemp. It was tasted by the priests on sacrificial occasions, while hymns were sung in its praise. Its action was that of hashish. It produced intoxications and stimulations of their senses, which were mistaken for inspiration. Their use in worship on sacrificial occasions, with its consecrated bread, introduced in honor of the divine founder of the law by his priestly successors, unquestionably gave origin to the use of bread and wine in the Christian sacrament, the connection between which it is designed to trace on a future occasion. Although, as we shall see, 
By the time the Hema ritual and the cult of Mithra was appropriated by Rome, it may have already gone through radical changes regarding the plant's use. Franz Cumont in The Mysteries of Mithra put forth that by the Roman period, grapes in the West replaced the Hema of the Persians. Hema, a plant unknown in the Occident, was substituted for the juice of the vine. A similar suggestion was put forth by Henrik Nyberg in 1938, who felt that with the reemergence of the Mithraic cult in Zoroaster's day, the clean alcoholic intoxication eventually beat out the holy intoxication of the Magus, which was possibly supported by the much deeper acting hemp intoxication. The drinking of Helma caused a more ordinary standard inebriation than ecstasy. Considering the Mediterranean of love of wine and the Roman depictions of Mithra holding a bunch of grapes are known, it seems likely that such may be the case in the later diffused foreign situation for the cult. Although in this regard, it is important to note the historical Persian references of cannabis-infused wines in Zoroastrian times, where Mithra still retained some standing of worship, and such preparations were known in both Greek and Rome, as well as in the Holy Land and other locations. In reference to Zoroastrian expeditions into the world of the afterlife, Shal Saked noted that preparations of this journey was done by administering to the officiant a dose of man, hemp, mixed with wine. Regardless of the potential substitution of the Persian Haoma with the more popular beverage of Rome wine, cannabis seems likely to have retained some role in the cult even into Roman times, as has been suggested by more recent scholarship. Cannabis was burnt in the cult of Mithras as an incense in an underground enclosure where they would be hot boxing. As Frederick Danaway has noted, the cult of Mithras, which may have been one of the main cults that retained and preserved the ancient mysteries for later generations of mystics, had strange incense rites as well. They actually put cannabis into the incense that they burned during the celebration of Mithras in an underground enclosure and they were inhaling the smoke during the process. When a Roman soldier who was a Mithrist was stuck in the field, he had to celebrate his god by digging an underground pit, fumigating it with cannabis and then spreading a tarp over it. In Did the Mithras Inhale, Professor Radcliffe Emmons describes Mithraic fumigation rites in relation to shamanic flight, indicating that this rite may have eclipsed the drinking of Haoma in its importance. The magician in the Mithras liturgy raises himself to the world of the gods through inhaling Panoma, and the sun rays are the path by which the Panoma from the divine realm comes down to the magician. Although the reference to this ritual practice are brief in the Mithras liturgy, they are clearly pr the primary means of shamanic ascent, since no other mode of ascent is ever mentioned. Radcliffe refers to the incense burning lions as seen in this figure as indications of this practice. Cannabis fumes undoubtedly had an effect on the perception of the participants. The smoke was the vehicle of the god. It's the tyranny. It is the incense that one literally inhales. It is something called theurgy. Theurgy is the motivation of a statue. It's the ability to communicate with a god through its cult statue. The entheogenic effects of the Mithraic sacraments were focused and magnified by the clever manipulation of light on divine statues, the movement of costume participants chanting and animal noises, such as wings flapping and lions roaring. In the case of the warrior brotherhood of Mithras, were back in the cave. The members who included the elite of the Roman Empire, most of its emperors, soldiers, and male bureaucrats, perpetuated the cave experience traceable back to the Paleolithic Age and experienced transcendence to the realm of the Empyrean through a sevenfold stage of entheon-induced 
initiations, the chamber was always fumigated with incense, in addition to the other psychoactive sacraments. Seven different sacraments were given to the initiate as he passed through the seven grades of the cult, so it is believed a variety of psychoactive substances may have been used. Professor Ruck and others have suggested mushrooms were among the Mithraic sacraments, and some of the images of Mithra's birth from a rock do seem like the mushroom personified. Mithra's red cap is also called the Liberty Cap, which later became a name of a strain of psilocybin mushrooms, although the cap's red color has made most mushroom enthusiasts suggest the spotted red fly agaric mushroom, and in that regard, images of a chalice to collect the bull's urines are of note as the psychoactive properties of the fly agaric can pass through it into urine and be re-ingested. However, it is also important to remember that the bull's urine itself was ritually ingested by the Persian practitioners of Zoroastrianism from which the Mithra worship in Rome descended. One last note on the red cap is that it later became a symbol of medieval alchemists. Later, Christian monks were obsessed with destroying any surviving remnant of the cult of Mithras because the Persian god particularly threatened the supremacy of their own god in the form of Jesus. In fact, many existing churches were built right over top of Mithraeums. Thus, in a, both a very real and a symbolic sense, Christianity based its foundation on Mithraism. Historically, the undisputable fact is that they borrowed so much symbolism from the Persian god's mythology that some historians now refer to Mithra as the proto-Christ. The secretaries of the Persian god, like the Christians, purified themselves by baptism, received a species of confirmation, the power necessary to combat the spirits of evil, and expected from a Lord's Supper salvation of body and soul. Like the latter, they also held Sunday sacred and celebrated the birth of the sun on the 25th of December, the same day on which Christmas has been celebrated since the 4th century at least. They both preached a categorical system of ethics regarding asceticism as meritus, and counted among their principal virtues abstinence and continence, renunciation and self-control. Their conception of the world and of the destiny of man were similar. They both admitted the existence of a heaven inhabited by beatified ones, situated in the upper regions, and of a hell peopled by demons situated in the bowels of the earth. They both placed a flood at the beginning of history. They both designed as the source of their traditions a primitive revelation. They both finally believed in the immortality of the soul, in a last judgment, in a resurrection of the dead, consequent upon a final conflagration of the universe. In the Mithraic mythology, Mithra merged with a redeemer known as the Sashuan, who, like Christ in the Bible's Book of Revelation with the healing leaves of the Tree of Life, would return at the end of time and restore the Hamerite by unwillingly sacrificing the last sacred ox to save the world. Turning his head, Mithra unwillingly plunges his blade into the ox's neck so that the sacred Haoma will again flow. Interestingly, in the Zoroastrian creation myth as recorded in the Bunda Hashin 420, Oramazd eased the death pains of the first created ox with cannabis. Perhaps in some way this mythological ox can be identified with a metaphorical sacred cow, and by plunging the sword of our intellect into the history of religion and analyzing it, we are in a sense revealing the sacrament of the ancient world, the Soma and Hilma, the once and future tree of life. A situation analyzed more thoroughly in cannabis and the Soma solution. Something to think about the next time you take a pull on that joint and inhale that agent healing mystic smoke. Until we meet again, I am Chris Bennett, and this has been Burning Shiva.